So hi everyone. I'm sure all of you guys are already like really, really tired from the entire morning and the past few days that you've been here in Beijing. But how are you guys? How are you feeling? Good? <laughs> how was Beijing? Was it good? What did you guys do? <laughs> Slept? Okay, that's, that's good, that's good. Uh, you need sleep. As founders, you need sleep, you need to be healthy. Um, you need to be focused as well. So today I'm going to be talking about my own personal uh, entrepreneurship journey as well as you know, why I'm doing what I'm doing and why I think she matters in technology. So what am I doing? So I am the founder or co-founder of She Loves Tech, which is the world's largest startup competition for women in technology. And essentially what we're doing is we, uh, we are running a global platform and building an ecosystem for women, tech, and entrepreneurship. And that one line embodies uh, who I am and what I'm most passionate about, which is social innovation. So I, on screen, you can see uh, what UN proposed as our sustainable development goals. So by year uh, 2025, I think that we should be uh, all solving, right? And I believe that you know, all of us can play a part in solving these things. And much like you guys are you know, entrepreneurs now focusing on all your own ideas, um, you, you are all also using technology to apply it, uh, to, to solve this uh, problem. And to me, you know, technology is a big disruptor. And it has the potential to scale and a potential to you know, bring your product to the next level and uh, you know, impact more lives. And in the same manner, you know, there's also one more thing that we're all not utilizing at the moment. One of the biggest untapped resources in the world right now, and that's women. So by sheer volume, they are half of the world's population. Um, the global she economy is also 18 trillion in size. But unfortunately, uh, there is still a lot of barriers to entry, right? Even though that's the case. Even though statistically, women have been shown to create businesses with real impact. Businesses that solve actual solutions. Uh, businesses that empower communities. Every time they do better, they reinvest in their communities, they help other people. But the fact is, bar barriers still remain. In the technology industry, there's only 14% of female founders that are women, or rather, tech founders that are women. There's only 2% of investment that goes to them. And you wonder why. Why is that the case when you know, women are doing all of those things and more? In fact, you know, if you just think of the volume again, that's half the world's population. And as I said, when women does well, everyone does better. How many of you guys speak Chinese, actually? So in, in Chinese, actually, women is woman, which means we. And that's a little bit of play with words. And I, I'm actually proposing that we, all of us, women and men, you know, create products, create startups, create technologies that can benefit the world together. So it's not just about women, it's not just about men, but with both parties' participation, we can actually do more and actually have the chance to reach the sustainable development goals, actually create technologies that matter. I was really impressed with the diversity today, and I was really impressed with the you know, technologies and the ideas that you have all come up with you know, at a very young age, and that's exactly what we should all be pushing towards. You know, whether or not your technologies uh, work right now, or whether or not your ideas are something that you will push towards, you know, days from now, months from now, years from now, but the fact that you even care enough, and all of us care enough to actually do something about it is really what's important. There are a lot of people who know about these problems. There are a lot of people who just go by their day to day, not really even thinking about what are the possibilities? What are the possibilities for change? And what are the things that they can change? And that would take a long time for all of us, but it starts with a single step in entrepreneurship. And you know, my own story with She Loves Tech has been quite actually incidental, but also very purposeful. So we started in 2015 as a very small competition here in Beijing. So personally, I'm from the Philippines. Um, I was born and raised there. But, and, but you know, in 2012, I had moved to China. And at that time, we were running another women's community. But we found like a huge gap and a huge opportunity at the same time, whereby we found that a lot of people in our communities were actually entrepreneurs themselves. And a lot of them were using technology to, um, in, in their product solutions and to uh, create solutions for, for, for things that they're focused on at that time. But the fact is, there were a lot of comments 
uh, saying that, oh, women are not doing technology, women are not uh, doing enough in this industry, or they are much suited for XYZ industries. Um, but that's not the case, right? Um, in our competition, five years forward, we are now larger than ever. Um, we have 2,000 plus startups, over 100 million US dollar raised for our finalists. And that just goes to show the types of technologies that are being created by women. And in this journey, whether it's me or you know, these founders, you could see that entrepreneurship is very, very difficult. You know, it's actually not easy. It's not an easy path, but if you have your eyes open the entire, tr the entire journey and you know the challenges that you're going to be facing and you have a support system, a network with you, then actually it becomes easier. And this competition or other platforms similar to this would also be able to help you. So what kind of technologies are we talking about, right? Just to give you an example, uh, this year one of our startups is Saika Onco Solutions. Um, they're from India, this is Nusrat, and she has created a molecular device that can deliver your cancer treatment directly to your cells. This is Canary from the US. Um, Emily dropped out of actually university to pursue what she's doing right now. And what she does is she has a software platform that allows you to cough into the device and it'll determine your respiratory health, whether you have a disease, and it'll continue to like, track and monitor it and help you, you know, overcome um, this disease. And this is also Phantasma Labs, um, this Maria, and she has created a technology which helps you know, autonomous driving vehicles predict human behavior better. Because with most autonomous driving uh, systems, you need a lot, a lot of data and a lot of um, like research and like testing in order for your technology to improve and actually be uh, safe for, for actually actual public use and road use. And so are others, right? So these are just some of the industries that um, we have seen like this year. And does this sound like something that uh, is not technology? Does this sound like women cannot be in technology? This is completely different uh, from what you know the, the public would actually tell you. As I said, there's only 14% right now that are, that are female in the tech founder kind of statistics. There's only 2% investment that goes into women. And a lot of the times, it's not because people are not acknowledging that women can do tech, especially now. When we first, first started, yes. Now, there's more and more women in tech initiatives happening everywhere. There are more and more people who are talking about diversity. But the fact is, there are still a lot of innate um, biases that you cannot really just tell people to change, right? These are things that, you know, if majority of your VTs are male, they're most likely going to be investing in, in people that are similar to them. Or they have certain biases in place that would make them ask certain questions that just makes the, makes the game look a little bit more unfair. So a lot of the times, it's very innate. So what do you do, right? So you show them these technologies. You look for uh, role models, right? You bring out like all of these technologies that they otherwise wouldn't see. You show them that it's not true. You prove to them that women can actually do tech and it's not just uh, lifestyle focus, not just consumer tech, which is nothing bad with that as well. But if you show them the diversity that's in place and the type of technologies that can actually impact millions worldwide, you know, part of the reason why I really love what I'm doing right now is not just because I'm a tech geek at heart, it's also because, you know, I know that in supporting all these women, I'm impacting millions of people worldwide as well, right? I'm helping them or supporting them, or I know that they are impacting millions of people worldwide. So just as a last statement, I'd like to, you know, just leave this with you guys, right? So with all of you here, male, female, young, old, I hope that we can all put this into practice, right? and encourage other people to also think this way. You know, because our future is gonna be hinged on this, right? We need a dual leadership. We need a leadership that can have both masculine and feminine, you know, uh, properties or like, uh, like certain personalities that, and certain diversity in place that can allow us to move forward and actually, you know, have a tomorrow. With the rate that we're going, if we don't do anything, we're not gonna make it, actually. And I'm very, very happy that I can be here and actually see a whole new set of uh, people who are working alongside myself and the other people here in the room to just, you know, tip the point a little bit, right? And I hope that all of us can persevere a little bit better. And if any one of you needs help, please reach out. And 
Thank you.